Yo yo, what is up guys? Welcome to my Race of Champions adventure. Today I'm gonna show you guys um, how I did in Race of Champions. What I did, uh, what there was to do. Uh, I had loads of fun, it was very cold as always uh, in Sweden. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys uh, how much fun I had, uh, how it went in E-Rock and also in the Nations Cup against the likes of Valtteri Bottas, Mika Hakkinen, Sebastian Vettel and Mick Schumacher. Um, gonna show you guys uh, a little bit behind the scenes and uh, hope you guys will enjoy it. So let's get into it. Now the week started off um, Tuesday morning flying from Amsterdam to Stockholm and then um, flying from Stockholm to Lulea, which is where we're gonna be racing or more or less it's still like an hour drive from there as you can see there we just arrived uh in lulea uh it's already dark which uh it gets dark there very early it's i think it, the sun rises at like 11 12 goes down by like three so you only really got like three hours uh, of sunlight uh before the sun sets um and then uh, as you can see there just arrived in lulea where we will get picked up by the organization everything was organized perfectly uh just like last year yeah we're just waiting for our luggage real quick as uh, there's this beautiful truck. that's me manic uh, <laughs> that's me manic uh, as now we got uh, a transfer to the hotel where we're staying the, the track is literally right next to the hotel um girlfriend was there as well um so i didn't have to spend all week on my own now, original plan was that on Wednesday we were going to go drifting with Porsche. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it was too warm to go drifting. So we went dog sledding. Uh, you can see <laughs> this beautiful husky right there. Uh, and even more huskies there. This was probably my favorite part of the of the week. Um, I, I want a husky as well now. But uh, <laughs> you can see they, they absolutely love uh, pulling around, running um even though it was like seven degrees today that's why we couldn't drive because otherwise we would destroy the ice um and that's why we also couldn't practice today so basically the schedule was swapped around from wednesday to thursday you can see the huskies are eating snow because seven degrees or i'm not sure, even sure if it was seven degrees i think it was a little bit lower it's already too warm for them um and that's why they put their heads into the snow and they they eat it um you can see beautiful sunsets right there well uh, while the Huskies pull, uh, pulls along. Um, and uh, last year I did, did this as well, actually. And um, I I met one of the dogs that I took a picture with last year because they were the same dogs as last year. Uh, last year I took this picture uh, with Jesko, he's called. Um, and this year he was there again. I showed the owner the photo and he uh, could uh, show me which dog it was. You can see there, that's Jesko again this year um i'm not sure if you recognize me of course they probably see a lot of week a lot of people on the weekend but um yeah they're such cool dogs yesco is i think the strongest one as well you can see he always pushes me over um and um uh, i got this cool picture as well so it was amazing to to see the dogs again i hope i'm there uh, next year again as well so i can see more dogs more huskies um but now on to thursday we go started off early at like 7.30 where we're gonna go drifting around this beautiful ice lake um, and um, you know last year we did this as well the track was a little bit bigger last year um, but of course this year there were the struggles of the, um, uh, the Wednesday where a lot of the ice was melted and even though the ice was still thick enough there was too much water on the ice uh, which just made it undrivable basically so uh, here we're just um, getting a little tour around the track so we know where we're going uh, before we started drifting around. Um, last year I just did only drifting but this year actually when I went into it I instantly tried to um, see how I can drive the fastest uh, around an ice track basically and even though it's completely different to the actual track we're gonna be racing on uh, I think it still helps a little bit you know trying to figure out what the fastest way to drive is that is me in the gray Porsche doing a little practice start because why not uh, and um, that was it we did it for an hour basically and then we went back to 
in the actual racetrack. Um, here's Teddy Grant um, showing us uh, a lap around the, the ice track uh, in, I say, at Cupra. We're driving behind him. And um, yeah, these cars had no studs, apart from my car, for some reason. So when we were driving around, everyone was sliding around so much and I couldn't figure out why they were driving so slow. But then uh, later I figured out that I, my car was the only one with studs. So um, that helps a lot. And even though they were very small studs, uh, it, it helped so much. And uh, one little fun fact as well, uh, a lot of people might not know this. If you're driving in a normal car without studs, uh, driving in the snow has more grip. But if you've got big studs, uh, driving on the ice has more grip. And that's simply because the studs can bite into the ice. Whereas if you've got big studs and you go over into the snow, then those studs are just hanging in the air. Um, but it's actually quite crazy how much grip you have uh, with tires that has, have studs in them on ice. Like, it's it's crazy like it almost has the same amount of grip as driving um, in wet conditions if not more I'm not sure it's hard to compare of course but still it's it's crazy how much grip you have and yeah driving in those uh, Cupras that was uh, not a lot of grip like we were driving so slowly and yet we were sliding around now this is, these are our first laps on uh, in the Polaris these cars are called a Polaris um, and these were just practice laps just getting to know the track a little bit I think we got like four laps four full laps which is um, like eight half laps you can see each lane is basically half a lap and if you do if you do both of them once then that's a full lap so um, just getting to grips with the track and as you can see here the track is very clean it's like you're just driving on pure ice and the more people drive around, the less icy it becomes. It just starts to become a lot of powder, uh, which is worse, actually. You want to be driving on pure ice. Just like I explained before, uh, you want to uh, be driving on the ice with these big studs, because then the studs are really biting into the ice. And yeah, once people start tearing the ice apart with big studs, then it becomes a lot more powder. Now, after all the practice was done, uh, we had to do an assessment lap. And as you can see, we're starting it right there. Um, where basically you get one full lap and you have to drive as fast as possible, timed. And then um, Lucas, Martin, Mike are doing the same. As you can see, I got a lot of understeer there. And that cost me a lot of time. Uh, whenever in, in these conditions you get understeer, you're losing time. Uh, because you have to drop the minimum speed so much. So that was not good, um, but of course we don't know the track really well yet and uh, when we did our practice laps uh, it was fresh conditions, like everything was just ice and then the next time we drove, which was this time, uh, it was at the end of the day. As you can see, the uh, sun is going down, uh, which is already starts at like half past uh, two, but um, we were like the last ones on track now and now there was so much more powder on the track. Um, and if that happens, the track is just so much more slippery. Um, and that's because of the studs in the tires. Whenever you are on ice with studs in your tire, uh, they're big studs, uh, you've got more grip than on snow. So whenever you go offline here, and as you can see there, I've got the same again. I had so much more understeer than uh, when we were doing practice laps. Um, so uh, that was a big change in how the car was reacting. Um, and I had to get used to it a little bit, but on the second half of the lap, I was so much more aggressive. And um, that's how I gained a lot of time. You can see this is much better now. Uh, I am be able to keep the minimum speed up through there. Then we're about to get up to this very big jump right here, which is easy flat out. If you're lifting, then you're going way too slow. Um, and that was my assessment lap done. Wasn't great because of the first part, but I think the others had the exact same because you can't really know with that little experience that you're gonna lose that much time um or have so much less grip so much more understeer balance was different car was behaving different I, I think none of us could have really known so i think all of us struggled a little bit with that but um yeah now both me and lucas on the assessment lab uh, got maximum points uh, on everything we got four uh, michael romanidis got um three two two 
Uh, so he lost a lot of points in the real life lap. Same for Martin Palm, got 3-3-3. Three, three, three. And you lose so much points with that that it's going to be really hard to make up for that on the sim. And that's why me and Lucas went through basically because we gained so many points through the real life stuff. I think I was fastest in the assessment lap by three tenths. Um, then Martin Palm was around eight tenths off. And then Michael was quite far off because, well, he doesn't really have any real life experience. So it was always going to be very hard for him to um, get up to pace in such, such a short amount of time. But um, basically me and Lucas uh, go on to the final of... Uh, the e rock championship and as you can see there we're gonna have to head, go head to head in real life as well now as you can see here head to head me versus lucas um it's lights out you can see i get a much better start than lucas off the line um i need to turn one got a, again a little bit understeer i think i was just not aggressive enough um and every time you get it under you're losing so much time. Which I didn't know at the time, of course. Uh, I'm used to real life, or not real life racing, but I mean um, normal racing. So not going sideways, uh, just asphalt stuff. Uh, we have to be very clean, of course. If you go a little bit over the limit, you lose grip, you lose time. Uh, especially on the sim, as I'm, I am getting proper sideways there. Um, and um, yeah, so far... Uh, it's not looking too bad. I think I lost a lot in the turn one, turn two section. Uh, Luke is going sideways over the hill, uh, which is all easy flat. And then again, through that last corner, you can see in, on the left there, I had so much understeer again. Um, and the gap should be around five seconds here, but it's like eight. So we lost like three seconds just in that first split already. Um, and now we need to try and make that up, of course. Now, something I had to realize myself over the weekend as well is that three seconds in rally racing or whatever you want to call this, snowy conditions, low grip conditions, three seconds is nothing. Honestly, like you just change your driving a little bit and it's three, four seconds gone um, or gain, uh, depending uh, what you change, of course. You can see there, Lucas going under the bridge now. Um, I am... Um, about to head over the bridge but Lucas is easily gonna win this by quite a margin and I was so confused at the time because of course I had these understeery moments where uh, I lost some time and as you can see there I'm like four or five seconds off uh, I'm not sure it hasn't shown up yet um, and at the time I was so confused like how am I five seconds off um, I just couldn't understand it. it was four seconds in the end but over the course of the weekend, I started understanding like four seconds in these conditions is nothing. Um, and once I realized that, I started going so much faster as well. Because then I realized like, oh, I just need to change that and that. And then I'm there. But um, sim races, uh, of course, I think me and Lucas were pretty equal. I think he was a little bit faster. Lucas made a big mistake in the sim race. In one of the races and lost like 1.5 seconds. But my loss here was too big um, to make up for it. Um, you can see Lucas going much more sideways there on the entry. Which is exactly what you need to be fast. Um, but so yeah. Basically Lucas won the E-Rock e Championship. Uh, I finished second. Which is still good, you know. Uh, at least now me and Lucas have done both. Last year I won. This year he won. Um... But yeah, you can see that he look is going sideways, and and we had understeer on that on that entry, um, and throughout the wall corner, which just cost too much time. So um, now, even though we finished second, obviously we're still gonna drive uh, in the Nations Cup together with uh, Lucas. Um, it's just that Lucas won the E Rock Championship. We still get to drive uh, on the Saturday, luckily. So the rest of the Friday just contained out of uh, practice we had a press conference as well so we got to drive the electric rally car a uh, real rally car um, didn't get to drive in the cupra you see behind me now on to the nations cup then we were facing finland first and lucas had to drive in the first race i had to drive in the second race against mika then in the third race it was lucas against or me against Valtteri, I'm not sure. Either me against Valtteri or... Uh, no, actually it was me against Valtteri in the third race. And then the fourth race was Lucas against Mika. 
um, because you have to face each other all at least once. And Lucas is doing uh, driving the Cupra right now. I had done no practice in the Cupra, and basically, if you have done no practice in a car, then they are not gonna let you race in it, uh, which is only fair, right? Because otherwise, it wouldn't be really fair. Like you need to have done at least a little bit of practice in each car. And as you can see there, Lucas is gonna quite comfortably win this. Um, and yeah, Lucas was just so much more committed than Valtteri. You can see Lucas wins by four seconds, I think so. Uh, looks looked about four seconds. And that means we've got a four second lead if it does come down to uh, it being a 2-2. So onto my race we go. Now it's my turn then against Mika Hakine. This morning I drove a lap in the electric rally car as well. And not gonna lie, I was really far the pace. Uh, I saw Christofferson did like a, a 135. I did like a 144. But I think I finally realized at that point what I was doing wrong driving wise, um, which is always really hard to figure out in such a small, short amount of time. Anyway, into the race we go then. You can see that it was green and we just went a little bit too early. Uh, and that means we get a jump start, which is a five second penalty. So unless we can get our five seconds back, uh, it's very unlikely we're going to win this, which is very frustrating. I went a little bit wide there, but at least I was very committed through that first part. And I think that was my issue earlier on. I just wasn't committed enough on entries, uh, which caused the car to understeer, and that loses you so much time. So um, you can see there, we're finally getting it proper sideways on entry. Um, still had to get the hang of it a little bit, of course. Um, rally cars were naturally a little bit understeery as well, but... Um, Managed to uh, get it uh, nicely rotated there. And I think that was the trick that, uh, that I needed. Over the bridge we go. Usually you need a 5 second advantage um, to be equal uh, over the split. One or the other. Um, and as you can see there, we're like 8 seconds ahead. So that basically means we got a 3 second advantage uh, heading into the, the second part of the lap. However, you might have seen this part a little bit. Um... On my second split lap in turn two, so it's a double left-hander. This is Mika right here coming across the line. You can see I'm right here. I went a little bit deep and I hit the snowbank. Um, you can see there, I hit the snowbank. And that probably cost me around two seconds, so that's very frustrating. But I, I just had to get on with it and keep pushing. Uh, we got a three-second advantage anyway, but it was just unfortunate I couldn't keep the momentum from the first run because we have that five second penalty, of course, uh, that's going to hit us hard. And now through there, that was very nice. And I just need to stay committed. You can see we are very committed through there. Nice entry, a little bit wide there, but that's fine. Uh, into the next left-hander again, nicely sideways, nicely rotated. Over the line we go. And we're going to finish like four seconds ahead. Uh, 37.3, so that was like a 7 second improvement uh, from the morning. And still not perfect, of course, because I had the snowbank, but at least I, I finally showed some good pace. Um, but we have got one more race to do. Against Valtteri next. Now, I'm driving in the actual rally car against Valtteri, uh, which makes it a little bit hard, because Valtteri has done some actual rally driving uh, in his life, like a few... Uh, years ago, I think 2020, he did the Arctic Rally, I think 2019 as well. Uh, so he's got actual experience in these cars. My start was not great, um, but we got it off the line at least. And now we need to try and get it nicely aggressive again. You can see I got it very nicely rotated through there, which is very important. Um, but now we've got the inside line. So we're starting on the opposite side where we started last time, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure, actually. Um... Compared to Mika. Now on entry. You can see. Nicely sideways. A little bit wide. Uh, which honestly is not too bad. Because I kicked all the snow into Valtteri's uh, windscreen. Um, so oh, as uh, Valtteri uh, hit the snowbank. I actually didn't see that before. But um, apparently he did hit the snowbank. At least it was on the inside. Which is alright. No ideal of course. Uh, might have a little bit of front bumper damage. Um, but yeah. Across the line. We are... Pretty much equal with Valtteri. Two tenths down, more or less. It needs to be around five seconds. Uh, 5.2 down. And we need to try and um, claw a little bit of time back somehow. 
uh, it's always hard to judge how far you're down in the actual uh, when you're actually driving. Valtteri gets a nicely rotated on that inside line. That was very nice. That was like spot on. Yes. Um, now we are the ones coming uh, over the bridge soon. And it's going to be very close if we go off that last split. We're going to go over the bridge in a second there. And across the line you can see we gain a lot. But it's just not quite enough. We are two tenths down. Uh, I think so. Two tenths if I remember correctly. Unfortunately. Um, so that means it's 1-2 uh, to Finland. Because I had the jump start. Uh, which basically ended up me ending up. A second behind Mika. Actually, Valtteri beat us by 7 tenths. I thought it was less. Uh, I thought it was much closer for some reason. But, um, yeah. Uh, Valt uh, Mika basically beat me by 1 second because I got a 5 second penalty. Which is uh, very frustrating. But, um, now, Lucas uh, has it all to do. Um, we are, I think, time-wise ahead in the head-to-head. -head. It's just that we are 1-2 down. So, if Lucas wins the next one... And only ends up like half a second behind. Then I think we're sorted already. So Lucas basically just needs to win. Now on to Lucas's race. You can see there on the middle split. Lucas is only 1.7 seconds down. When he was on the slower starting side. Which basically means he is 3 seconds ahead. Going into this final run. Uh, they're both driving an electric rally car. So that's the same one I drove against Lucas in. Uh, I think it's the electric rally car, I'm not sure. Might actually be the normal rally car. Let me actually turn up the sound. That he's been able to bring to racing champion. It is the actual rally car, not the electric one. Um, now, Valtteri did a 39.6 in that one, I think so. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Mika and Lucas do. Um, I think I was 7 tenths down, 8 tenths down against Valtteri. I, I can't remember. I just remember I saw it real quick. I thought I was 8 tenths down, 7 tenths down against Valtteri. I, so I did like a 40.3. Um, and you can see there on the overall time. Uh, because Lucas won, we are 7 seconds ahead. Um, and um, we go through. Because it was 2-2, two -two, we win on time overall. So uh, on to Germany we go then. Um, couldn't see the end time of Lucas there. It would have been nice to see for comparison. But it uh, doesn't matter in the end anyway. We made it through. Easy as that. Now, up against Team Germany. Uh, it's first off Lucas against Sebastian Vettel in the Polaris cars. And these these are the cars we should be the most comfortable with. Um, but as you can see there, unfortunately, Lucas went a little bit wide into the snowbanks. And that's like... Two, three seconds gone. Uh, as I had against Mika as well. But um, that's very unfortunate. But however, uh, Lucas has been looking very fast so far. And I've got no doubt that he can bring this back. And he's going to absolutely fully send it for sure. Uh, I remember before the races, we kept telling each other, is this going to be win it or bin it? Uh, because that's literally what it is. We've got so much less experience in real cars than everyone we're driving. Because we're literally driving against real world uh, champions and the first place for Sebastian is 50.1 now remember five seconds is the gap for it to be equal and it is seven so Lucas has to make up two seconds in his next split um, for him to still finish ahead of Sebastian so that's not gonna be easy uh, not gonna lie um, but not impossible of course I think Sebastian has been struggling a little bit in these snowy conditions um, because it is it is so different, of course, to um, driving on asphalt. Um, and yeah, you just need to drive so differently. It's not easy with quite little practice compared to real life or asphalt racing where you get so much practice. Um, Sebastian gets a lot of understanding at that last corner. And I think that's why Lucas still came pretty close. But unfortunately, uh, it's not enough. Sebastian is 43.3. Um, Lucas a little bit slow, I think a 44-0, which uh, is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. That's that's why this format is so brutal. You have to get it right. You have to be in the limit and also uh, not make any mistakes because you end up losing so much. You can see it just went a little bit too deep, locked the rears, and that was 
two, three seconds gone, unfortunately. It is what it is. On to my race then, against this guy called Mick Schumacher. Um, and, um, yeah, he's all right, isn't he? he um, he's, he's got a bit of experience. But um, we're arriving in the Polaris as well, by the way. And yeah, I, I prefer the rally cars, to be honest, because they're faster, of course. They've got more grip, but the Polaris is still a lot of fun as well. Anyway, we're six tenths down to Germany. Uh, it's 1-0 for them. And if we don't win this one, then we basically need to win uh, the last two. Off the line we go. Again, I've got a really good start. A little bit much understeer for me on entry, but we managed to keep decent minimum speed, I think so. A little bit wide on entry there, but we managed to get around and not hit the snowbank this time. Um, and uh, basically, if you're on the inside where I'm starting, you need to be ahead through this section. Otherwise, you've lost too much time in the beginning. So, um, decent start there. And then into the long left hand, you can see I've gone a little bit wide. I've hit the snowbank again, but we managed to keep it going. And uh, you can see there, Mick hit the snowbank a little bit on the inside. Went on two wheels. But um, I knew against Mick, uh, I had to be on it. I think last year he did a little bit of practice with uh, some rally cars ahead of this uh, to make sure he was ready. And um, that means he's gonna be in, uh, he's gonna be absolutely on it. First lap done, we are 5.6 seconds down. So we're probably around half a second down heading into this last split, and we probably lost so much time uh, hitting that snowbank on the outside. Um, but yeah, that was the mentality change I had to go through this morning, uh, where I was way too conservative um, when driving around. And now I was like actually so aggressive. I was uh, absolutely pumped and yeah, just ready to uh, to absolutely send it in every single corner, which you just have to. Uh, it goes a little bit wide there, but keeps gets the car rotated, keeps the minimum speed up into the final corner from Mick. We're going to come over the bridge in a second. But unfortunately, we're going to be a little bit too far down. Um, we did, Mick does a 41-1, which is a lot faster than Sebastian did, uh, by 2.2 seconds. Um, we were like half a second down, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, it was still a good run, but Mick was just faster. A uh, 41-1 in, in those Polarises is really fast. Uh, I remember later on in the weekend seeing Peter Solberg going like half a second faster, doing 40.6, more or less. So honestly, I did, I had a good run. Um, I think if you're a second of the actual rally drivers, <laughs> you're doing good, uh, because these guys are so fast. You can see me there going through the snowbank, and it cost me a lot of time. But that's just the approach I took uh, deciding this morning, that I just had to send it. So I had to go through a big change, but um, it's clearly working well, unfortunately. Just not fast enough, and half a second down. Now on to race three then. Lucas has to win this one, otherwise um, we can just mathematically not win anymore. So then it would be 3-0 against, uh, against us for Germany with one race to go, so we can only make it 3-1. So Lucas has to win this one, and then we also, if I win the last one, it has to be by enough of a margin um, overall time, so that, um, yeah, we've got... The advantage on the overall time of course now uh, it's Lucas against Mick and uh, as I said Mick is pretty good uh, in these cars on these conditions has the experience and you can see Mick on the inside line taking a proper sideways so that's the uh, that's the fast way to do it but you need to do it controlled because if you go too far then uh, you just lose time or end up in the snowbanks and uh, I think they're driving the electric rally car now uh, they are actually driving an electric rally car. I can see it on the dash uh, behind the wheel. And um, honestly, I think this might have been uh, my favorite. It was the fastest. Um, although the rally car with the shifts is, is really cool as well. Has a, has a lot of sound. Um, has a lot of power as well. As um, Lucas, 48-0 uh, on the split. Uh, Mick, 5 seconds behind. So they are pretty much equal. Um in this electric rally car and now it's all going to come down to um who we'll gets it right in this uh in the second half of the lap as we're on board with mick right now and 
it's going to be close. As you can see there, unfortunately, Lucas went over the snowbanks. And all, that costs you so much time. So, I think no matter what Lucas does now, all Mick has to do is just keep it on the road. And he's going to win here. You can see there, Mick is already across the line. And um, Mick does a 37-0, which was pretty much the same I did against Mika, I think so. Um, so, uh, yeah, Mick was just flying. Um, but, um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get to race the ra last race because they were short on time. Um, I think there was a little bit delay. And because the sun set so early in the day, I didn't get to drive against Sebastian, which is a real shame. I would have loved to uh, try have a little revenge from last year. But, um, yeah, real shame that um, I didn't get to drive against Sebastian. But that's just how it is. You can see there, Lucas... Um, going over the snowbank, uh, and then you have to get back over it again, of course. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's like two seconds, three seconds gone, of course. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but um, real shame I didn't get to race against Sebastian. But I would, I would rather have it end like this than um, um, Lucas being five seconds off and both of us being way too slow. Um, but yeah, that's the mentality we went into it, of course. To try and uh, to try and beat Finland as well, and that then it worked. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this race of champions recap. I uh, hope you guys uh, learned some new things, um, and uh, see you guys next time. Ciao. Yeah, yeah, yeah.